get the wee drop more than number two. Okay, Molly, come on up for a wee number two. This man's 21 plus fat. <laughs> not right, Molly? I'm sure there's not too many links and converts about, but uh, this man's the same. It's a great encouragement to me at the mission stuff of Jamar. When we saw a wee touch of the spirit of God moving, didn't we, Molly? And uh, a great man of prayer. And just uh, tell us briefly how you, you were seeing, Molly. Thank you. Just stay close to the mic. Alright, thanks, Paul. I told you, I didn't tell you my rage, <laughs> but I told you, I'm not going to pass you a look for me, you know, I'm good age. <laughs> but uh, someone has said when you're giving your testimony, start it for the first and finish it for last. So, I started, started the first, I know. First, it's low, low, <coughs> time away. And you might wonder. I was born on the 11th of February. Listen now, what year? <laughs> <laughs> 11th of February, 1933. So you can count that up now. <laughs> and I was born in Banbridge, Hospital. I think I was right in saying. And I was the first baby boy born in Danbridge Hospital. And uh, that's a good way to go. And uh, I was the best looking what boy <laughs> born. So that's, a, that's more or less kind of the beginning. And you know, at that time, as you know, mostly February. Is one of the worst months of the year for snow. When I was born, a big snow and at that time. And I was born before I got home. I got the lamp to my grannies. I wasn't walking. <laughs> I got there because we knew Kara at the time. But uh, at that, I got the lamp to my grannies and stayed there. I was supposed to stay in there a week, but I finished out five weeks before I got up to the top of the hill where I lived. So that was a good big snowstorm, and I can remember quite a lot of big snowstorms. Well, as I said, I was born into a, a Christian home, good Christian home, where we were sent to hear the precious word of God. And uh, you know, there's many, many missions in our area at that time. There was a man by the name of Bobby da Baxter from Dubor, um, and if you know him or not, he did a lot of missions around our area in the Orange Homes. And you know, I was there quite often. So these missions were held mainly in Orange Homes around us. And I was there quite often. And you know, he was a very faithful preacher. And he didn't come out of those services uh, without hearing the word of God. And you know, whenever I was from five or six years old, I was brought the level to services such as that. Heard the word of God, knew, knew that what I ought to do if I ever wanted to be in heaven. Another uh, a lot of people that came around as the Faith Mission Pilgrims, they came to our area quite often, and I heard the Word of God faithfully preached again. And uh, I was brought near the kingdom. And uh, as you know, there's always something that hinders you from coming to put your trust in the Lord. That's the devil who seeks to hinder you. And you know, I was born into a Christian home. <coughs> On a farm, and uh, lived work on the farm all the days of the day. Lived in the same house for seventy-eight years. Anybody else lived in that house seventy-eight years? <laughs> <laughs> well, I lived in the same house for seventy-eight years, and uh, as I told you, I heard the gospel. Another uh, her people that came to take mission was Brown and uh, Wheeler. Some of them known them. They came. And these men and women were all faithful to God's word, yeah. proclaiming the 
the gospel of Christ. And I knew from an early age that if ever I wanted to be in heaven, I must do something about it. I must accept the Lord Jesus as my Savior. You know, time goes on and you keep putting it out. Uh, you know what? So many of these men and women who have been preaching at some time that have mentioned the coming of the Lord. And you know, I knew that the Lord was coming. And if I ever wanted to be in heaven, I must have preparation made. You know, people, there were all these people that came that were very faithful to God's word and warned us to flee from the wrath to come. You know, uh, I pray, sometimes I was afraid at night. And uh, uh, some of the prayers that I had to pray, Lord, I hope the Germans will not come tonight. See, I was brought up in the war time. And I heard all this. And I knew <coughs> that the Germans would come. You know, I had to kill them from death to death. And all that message was that the blood was coming of the Lord. And you know, from an early age, you know, I knew that the Lord was coming. He was coming for those who, who were ready, who had made preparation. And you know, that, that was, uh, you know, God was speaking to me. Another prayer that I had to pray that night, that the Lord wouldn't take his Holy Spirit from me. You see, I knew what it was for God to speak to me. I heard the speakers, but I knew what it was for God to speak to me. And that was another prayer. I prayed that the Lord wouldn't take his Holy Spirit from me. Because I knew if that happened, I would be left behind for judgment. And so as a, as a brother says, now, if we were to free, a we were to test with five or six, and start ten, so I'll let them keep going. Uh, some things wrote down here in the Holy Read on writing, and you know, whenever you get to my age, your memory screws <coughs> up at times. And then you, you say things you maybe shouldn't say, and you say uh, some other things that you should have said, you should have, I have said, but I have some few things wrote down here. I want to hear W.B. Nicholson. You know, I heard many good preachers. But I heard Elphus and I. And the, the jokes he was passing. I said, I'd like to hear this now. So the mission came to Lisbon. And uh, I went there. It was the age of 14. Left school. Didn't go to school too long. Didn't go over the air. But, uh, but, uh, I was 14 at the time, and uh, I went to hear WP. You know, one of the sayings that he said in one of his meetings was, he asked, uh, he asked the audience, big audience, he had already been Christ. He says, is there a man here that never had a row with his wife? <laughs> <laughs> These are some of the things that he would have just come out with. Is there anybody here? Is there a man here that never had a row? with his wife and it was not much and doing for a wife and there's a man way down there and he 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 stood at his feet. And then he looked at him and he says, Sit down you liar <laughs> 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 that was that was sort of sort of a man W P was and I don't know I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to tell you I want to hear WP. And you know, to me, he was a good preacher. And you know, in spite of his jokes, you know, he could have had the people laugh one minute and the next minute down to earth, very serious, and the presence of God in the And you know, I had heard the gospel often, but you know, at the end of that meeting, as he always did, there was an appeal made. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was one a shy sort of fella. And not 
platform now and some of that. Uh, I was shy, but you know, that, that wee bit of encouragement, you know, I decided that I would put my trust in the Lord Jesus. And you know, I'm glad to say that the Lord saved me at that time. That was on that. That was on that. In November 1947, a long time ago, many of you weren't born. So uh, at that time, and uh, you know, I haven't never been all that I should have been since that. But you know, I'm glad that I trusted Christ Amen. and I'm seeking to live for God. And you know what he said, John asked me to give a wee word of testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, how could you refuse anybody like John? Like a fellow. And you know, he's likable to all ages. He knows and he, he gets to know the people. And so I'm glad that I trusted Christ as my Savior. And, and I've been in, maybe not in a, a big way, involved in Christian work. I have been involved in the Christian Workers Union down through the years. Many a time we've sat in this hall here uh, uh, at committee meetings. And uh, so I know, I know the hall well, and I'm glad that I was able to serve the Lord in the Christian Workers Union, the one especially, the one in Dramara, and, and also involved in the prayer union of the Rings End, the mission hall, away of the top of the hill. John was a mission there. Four or five years ago, and that's when we got to know him. And you know, I can rejoice that the Lord saved me. And uh, you know, there's a sometimes you know, you hear people giving their testimony, they'll maybe say, you know, who, who they're saying, I couldn't keep it. And it's true, we couldn't keep our salvation. But you know, the Lord is able to keep us. And Second Timothy is able, he's able to keep that which we have committed unto him. And you know, if we trust him, he saves us. Another verse, uh, Victor mentioned here, but it's in John 1 and 12, as many as received him, as the Lord Jesus, to the end, gave me power to become the sons of God. You know, it's only those who receive them. He's able to give them power to stand for him, to live for him in the day in which we live. And then uh, another one. In 2 Corinthians, you know, you know, whenever a person becomes a Christian, you know that outside the world, you look, you look for a change in the life. Mm. And you know the green verse says, uh, If any man be in Christ, yes. he's a new creature. And you know that's, a, that's the only way we can look. If we weren't in Christ, we couldn't serve him. And you know he's worth serving. But when we think of what he's done for us, He's able to save to others. <coughs> and you know, as I said, John asked me, we were in five minutes, I don't know, five minutes up or not. But, uh, <laughs> 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 but I'm glad to be involved in the uh, work of the Lord. You know, there's nothing like it. You know, people serve the devil for many a year of their lives. And if they come to the end of the journey, it's not in the day of the street, but it's good to have served. And I trust that you know, that each one here, Scott, will seek to serve the Lord in these days. Thank you, John. Amen. Thank you, Wendy.